breaking news, an awful crash in North Hollywood. Let's go to Stu Mendel live in Sky 2. Stu? A pickup truck upside down after smashing into several parked cars out here in the North Hollywood area on Sherman Way. There's some of the vehicles right there. Now, miraculously, nobody's been hurt, but take a look at the damage this pickup truck did. It's upside down. That driver also unhurt, as we're being told, and we know that that person not being taken into custody. Speeds may have been the cause of this crash, again happening on Sherman Way right about at Fulton in the North Hollywood area. They said that this intersection will be shut down for about another half hour while they clean up the wreckage live in Sky 2 over North Hollywood. I'm Stu Mandel. Back to you two in the studio. And now to a vicious crime spree. Police say the son of Farrah Fawcett is the culprit. Redmond O'Neill has been accused of stabbing and beating several people. Tonight, CBS 2's Rachel Kim is live outside LEPD's Pacific Station with more. Rachel. Yeah, Susie and Jeff, today detectives here at the LAPD's Pacific Station presented their case against Redmond O'Neill to the district attorney's office, and they filed attempted murder and several other serious charges. 33-year-old Redmond James O'Neill is in custody again. This time, the son of actors Ryan O'Neill and the late Farrah Fawcett is accused of a violent crime spree in the Venice Beach and Palms neighborhoods. The LAPD began this investigation in early May when an unidentified suspect randomly attacked five men in unprovoked confrontations. Two of the victims were seriously injured. On May 8th, Redmond O'Neill was arrested for an armed robbery at a 7-Eleven. Well, after his arrest, police Police say the crime spree ended, and detectives realized that O'Neill matched the description of the suspect in the attacks. Based on witness identifications and other evidence, police linked O'Neill to the crime spree. Police say O'Neill punched and stabbed victims, and in the most serious attack, police say O'Neill reportedly stabbed a man walking to his car, leaving him laying in a pool of blood with wounds to his face and upper body. I spoke with his friend on the phone tonight, and he told me this victim was in critical condition at one point and is still in the hospital. Redmond O'Neill has been in trouble with the law over the years. When his mother, Farrah Fawcett, died, she reportedly left the bulk of her estate to Redmond. He was to receive $4.5 million. He was arrested for probation violations and has a history of drug arrests. Back in 2008, both he and his dad, Ryan O'Neill, were arrested for drug possession. If you have any information or if you witnessed any of these attacks, you're asked to call detectives here at LAPD's Pacific Station. As for Redmond O'Neill, he is in jail with no bail. Back to you in the studio. Rachel Kim reporting live for tonight here on CBS2. Love them, then leave them in jail. A woman accused tonight of conning men that she met online, and she may be at it again. CBS2's Stacey Butler explains the possible scheme tonight. 44-year-old Sun Mi Kim say police is at it again. Accused of targeting unsuspecting men, she meets online, dating them, then accusing them of domestic violence. Once she has them arrested, she returns to their homes and steals everything of value. Nearly 400 miles away, police in Mountain View say she struck again. Back in January, Kim, who went by another name, claimed her fiancé had attacked her, but she refused to give officers her name. Turns out the man they arrested was only her housemate. And while he was in jail, she cleared out his house and took off. She was arrested yesterday in Palo Alto. Police say she was on parole and supposed to remain in Orange County after serving four years behind bars for targeting men in Garden Grove, Orange, and Irvine seven years ago. The man who lives in this Irvine condo told us he met Kim on the dating app KoreanCupid.com. He knew her just one week when she falsely accused him of of domestic violence. He was arrested. Only later did police learn the truth and release him. The homeowner didn't want to go on camera, but he said that he trusted Kim because they shared the same Korean heritage. Kim was charged with a slew of crimes in 2011 and was released from prison three years ago. And police tell me they believe in these last three years she's been targeting people up and down the state of California. If you have any information or believe you may have been victimized, contact your local police. In Irvine, Stacey Butler, CBS 2 News. Tonight, people around the world are mourning the sudden death of Anthony Bourdain. Yeah, the food writer and host of CNN's Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, apparently hanged himself in a hotel room in France where he was filming. Bourdain championed many restaurants in Los Angeles, especially family-owned businesses in Koreatown. After the suicides of Bourdain and designer Kate Spade earlier this week, calls to a local suicide prevention center have spiked. 
often there's been some terrible blow. In this case, it might be the blow of see, seeing someone that you thought had everything. And if they can't make it, how can I make it? And it makes you feel like giving up. Your darkest hour will pass. And so we want you to get past it and we want you to get help. Chosen specialty. Like CDC is fire. releasing a survey this week showing the suicide rate in the U.S. has increased by 25% over the past 20 years. And if you or anyone you know needs counseling about depression or if you have suicidal feelings, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number is 1 800 273 TALK or you can text TALK to 741 741. On to politics tonight, President Trump stirring up all kinds of drama at the G7 summit in Canada, and he is leaving early. Yeah, dis disputes over trade and a suggestion about Russia were at the center of it all. And tonight, CBS2 political reporter Dave Bryan is here to explain it all. Dave? You know, uh, the president reportedly told some of his aides he was dreading going to this conference because he thought they were going to lecture him all day. Mm -hmm. But the president came to the G summit, uh, G7 summit armed with a big surprise. Despite indisputable evidence that Russia effectively meddled in the 2016 presidential election, the president declared it's time for the G7 to bring Russia and Vladimir Putin back into the fold. By the time he landed in Quebec, President Trump had already changed the hot topic of discussion at the G7 summit from trade threats and tariffs and other grievances to inviting Russia to the summit where Vladimir Putin should be seated. Russia should be in this meeting. Why are we having a meeting without Russia being in the meeting? We should have Russia at the negotiating table. That pushed the other issues off the table, or at least temporarily to the back of the table, while the G7 leaders from Europe and Asia tried to address the president's stunning remarks. Not surprisingly, the other G7 leaders strongly disagreed because Russia and Vladimir Putin were kicked out of the G8 in 2014 for invading and annexing Crimea. British Prime Minister Theresa May told reporters, let's remember why the G8 became the G7, and before discussions could begin on any of this, we would have to ensure Russia is amending its ways and taking a different route. Rhode Island Democratic Senator David Cicilline, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, told CNN that for the president to suggest Russia should be invited to join the G7 now is outrageous. And to suggest that they should be invited in just like the UK and France, Evidence is a fundamental misunderstanding or uh, just ignorance of how dangerous Russia is and what a threat they pose to the United States. Now, tomorrow morning, President Trump will leave the meeting in Canada and head to Singapore abo aboard Air Force One. He'll spend a couple of days preparing for his one-on-one -on -one summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, which begins on Tuesday, Singapore time, Monday evening here on Pacific time. Susie, back to you. All right, Dave, thank you. Cal Fire is officially blaming the utility PG&E for some of the deadly wildfires in October. The agency says 12 Northern California wildfires were caused by downed PG&E power lines. 15 people died in those fires. This new report focuses only, though, on the wildfires in Napa and Mendocino counties. Cal Fire is still investigating the cause of other fires that burned in both October and in December. Detectives hope a big reward will help them catch a suspected sexual predator from Santa Monica. Greg Allen Carlson has been on the run since September. LAPD arrested him for several sexual assaults burglary and assault with a deadly weapon. Today, that agency says that Carlson first took off to South Carolina. From there, he fled in a stolen vehicle with a stolen handgun, lots of cash. Carlson has been spotted in Alabama and Florida. There's a $25,000 reward for his capture. He is considered by the FBI armed and dangerous. The immigration battle is heating up again in the Southland tonight. Busloads of immigrants may have been dropped off at the federal prison in Victorville today. Tonight, CBS 2's Tina Patel has reaction. Buses from Homeland Security were seen at the federal prison in Victorville early Friday morning. They were believed to be dropping off more than 200 immigration detainees, with another 7 to 800 expected through the weekend. But immigrant rights activists say the federal government has been secretive about exactly where these detainees are coming from. We don't know who's there. We don't know uh, is it folks that they got uh, you know at the border. Is it people that they're transferring from other detention centers? Uh, are there mothers? Are there children there as well? We don't know these um, these answers. They also don't believe that claims from Immigration and Customs Enforcement that the use of the prison and others across the country are only a temporary measure to help with the surge of illegal border crossings. 
it's really difficult for us to believe that uh, somehow they're going to find other beds, somehow they're going to build detention centers to hold these folks. Activists aren't the only ones who have questions about the plan to house detainees in prisons, which was announced only days ago. The union that represents employees here at the prison has raised concerns about the short notice they were given regarding the arrival of the detainees and the staffing levels needed to accommodate such an influx. They say there were already staffing shortages at the prison and there's been no information about the possible medical needs of the detainees. Activists say some of the detainees have come with their families seeking asylum from their home countries and they deserve to be treated better. What we see here is just once again further uh, criminalization and further um, dehumanization of immigrants that are coming to this country from the administration. In Victorville, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. 2018 LA Pride Festival is about to get started and street closures already in effect. The big West Hollywood event goes from noon to 1 a.m. tomorrow and Sunday. There will be live music, a parade as well. Parts of San Vicente, Santa Monica Boulevard and surrounding streets will be shut down. We do have details at CBSLA.com under Scene on TV. Some residents are having a mansion meltdown. So they are taking action against their own neighbor. That story straight ahead. Plus this. I'm Jeff Nguyen, live in South Pasadena. Imagine getting a home worth about a million dollars for a third of the value. Well, some people are saying no thanks. The story straight ahead. Hey everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. Get ready for a warm-up red flag warning. Some wind advisories. I'll show you the weekend on the way. And here's a look at the guests tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert.